This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and happy Friday. God bless you. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor True Vine, MBC here in Houston, Texas. And I thank you so much for joining us for like to call the pastoral moment. This is the time I get to encourage and enlighten with the word of God. And today, and today, and today, I want to talk about, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you that you were made, you were made to worship God. That's what you're here for. You were made to worship. That's what you were made to do, to worship, to praise God, to lift up his holy name, to, to elevate, to lift him up. Because the thing about it, God loves to get glory. That's what he loves. He loves to get glory. He loves to be praised. And so we were made to worship. We were made to worship. I have some scriptures here to back that up. Job Chapter 1, verses 20, 21. At this, at this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. And then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall, I shall, do, I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. So, Job was facing all types of adversity during this point. And it hit that pivotal point to when he lost his children, his children passed. And so that right there, that devastation, that type of grief um, hit him at that moment. And, and it, I mean, it's overwhelming because I couldn't imagine losing um, one of my children and he lost all of his children. So I mean, that hit him out of nowhere and boom, he just fell to the ground, ripped his clothes and he began to worship God. And he said, naked I came and naked I shall return. Because the thing about it, we got to learn to worship God through adversity, through pain, through struggle, through hardships, through situations, through sickness, um, through death, different things. We have to learn to worship God no matter what. No matter what. And that's finding that contentment in every situation. We must learn to praise God. We must learn to worship him in every single situation. No matter if it's a good or bad one, we must learn to worship God through hurt, through pain, through sickness, um, through divorce, through all type of things that's going to happen in our life. We must learn to worship in suffering. Learn to worship God. And that's what Job, Job said, though he slay me yet, Will I trust him? And then we have Isaiah 12 and 5. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. And so that's, a, that's a, another song of worship. And so sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. He has done great things in our lives. He, have does, he has done glorious things in our lives. So why not worship God? Worship God and give him the praise. Worship in singing. Worship in hymns. Worship God. And give him what he deserves. He deserves the worship. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Luke 4 and 8. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And how many of you do that? How many, how many of you worship God and serve him only? See, a lot of us have these lowercase g gods, these idols that we like to idolize. Uh, where there's money and it becomes an idol. Uh, on and on. Different materialistic things um, or even people. Um, we, we put that person, if you put another person before God, if you put anyone before God or anything before God, that is called idol worship. And so that is not good. That is not good. You want to um, get rid of that and, and just completely surrender and serve and worship the Lord because he loves to be praised because he is a jealous God and put no God before him. So do not do that. Don't put any God before him. John 4, 23, 24, it said, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So let's, let's look at the 23rd verse first. So we must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, this spirit, that it, this is not the Holy Spirit, okay? This is the inner, your inner spirit, your a person's spirit in the inner man, the inner, instead of outwardly showing it, sometimes you ought to worship him with the inner, the heart. And that's what, he, that's what God looks at. He looks at the heart. And so 
Just because I, I'm looking like I'm worshiping on the outside doesn't mean that I'm worshiping because God looks at the heart. I might fool other people. You might fool other people because they see that um, in, in, in the physical. However, they don't know what's going on in the inner man. And so God looks at the heart and he's saying, worship me in your heart. Worship me in your heart and in what? In truth, the word of God. Worship me the way the word of God tells you to worship me. Worship me using the word of God. Worship me with the truth. Sanctify them with thine truth. And who is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. Worship Jesus Christ and God himself. God loves that. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. That's, who, that's what God wants. He wants those type of the true worshipers, the real worshipers, those who really love him because he's examining the heart again. He's examining the heart and he knows. And then 24th verse, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so that's the thing. We got to learn to worship him in spirit and in truth. Be real with God. Worship him in realness, not fakeness, because it's not about putting on a show. It's not about putting on a show. I know we have a lot of people in the church like that, but it's not about that. Worship him in spirit and in truth because God is examining every heart. Colossians chapter three, verses 14 through 17. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together. Perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful Verse 16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through hymns and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Verse 17, and whatever you do, whatever you do, <laughs> whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So, we, again, worship him, worship him, spirit and truth, worship him through songs, through psalms, hymns, and spirit, singing to God in gratitude of your hearts. Again, your hearts. It's in your heart because what is in a man's heart, so is he. And it will come out. It will come out. And so it's about the heart. Worship God with your heart heart, your whole heart, your true heart, with the fruit of your lips, you're blessing God. And so that's what we should do in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. So Receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. This kingdom cannot be shaken. The true worshipers cannot be shaken. The true, the real worshipers, the, the true believers in Christ. Hey, we worship God because it's in our heart. And, and I'm telling you, the every, the reverence, everything we've given him, God loves it. He loves the glory. He loves to be worshiped. He loves to be praised every single day, all day. The angels are worship, worshiping him. The They are falling to his feet and they're worshiping him. They're praising him. And um, lifting him at his throne, lift, lift me, lifting him up at his throne. And so that is amazing. And then we have Revelations 19.10. Revelations 19.10. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that. That's the angel talking. Don't do that, John. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. And so the angel is telling John, do not worship me. Don't worship me because John was overwhelmed with so much. It was just so spectacular. It was amazing. And, and, um, and in this pensive state that he was in, he it was amazing just to have this vision uh, that John, this great vision of heaven. And he was in heaven. He was seeing everything. He even saw the church, the future church. Uh, in heaven and, and worshiping Christ and the 24 elders. And, and he saw that and he was so amazed that he even fell down to worship the angel. And the angel said, no, stop. Don't do that. You only worship God. You hear me, people? Only worship God. Angels don't get, they, we don't give angels worship. We don't worship angels. Let the Mormons do that. No, believers in Christ, we don't do that. We worship Jesus Christ. That's who we worship. We worship God, him alone. Nobody else gets the worship. Nobody else gets the worship but him. Worship God. That's why with that exclamation point at the end. Worship God 
for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. And so he deserves all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. So give God the praise, give him the glory. You were made to worship. Remember that you were made to worship. If you're a believer in Christ, you were made to worship. So worship God on every hand. Don't just wait till Sunday. Worship him Monday through Friday. When you get a chance, worship God. Give him praise. Give him glory in your prayers, in your supplication, whatever, in your fasting. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Worship him in song. Worship him in hymns. Wor worship him in psalms. Worship him. Give him the glory. You can even worship him on paper. Worship in the word. I mean, just worship Christ. He deserves it. He deserves that worship. So God bless you. I pray that you enjoy this pastoral moment. And tune in Sunday for the word of God. Tune in Sunday for the word of God. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So tune in Sunday for the word of God. Be encouraged and stay encouraged. And remember, you were made to worship. We here at True Vine, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. And we're praying for you for all your support. Um, and we love you. You know why? Because we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.